I've made some meters for measuring voltage, current and power for a number of reasons. One of the reasons is that I want to measure the amount of current which is in an 18650 battery or maybe other types of battery as well. Uh, I want to measure how much current it, it can discharge and how much current it takes to charge it as well. So I've got a little circuit here where I've got my power meter which I've made a few of now and if you look at my video simple uh, power supply this is the same circuit which I use to measure current and um, voltage in that. And it's a very simple circuit with just with a pick microcontroller, a uh, quad op amp and one of these OLED displays. Now in that video there was two issues I still had with this. Uh, one of which was um, the voltage and current was very noisy, it was fluctuating a lot uh, and I found out that the issue with that was this: these OLED displays create a lot of noise uh, so I found a solution to that uh, and also uh, the offset voltage, uh, oh, sorry current, offset current on um, these displays I made a few of these modules uh, and one of the modules was perfectly fine, offset zero for the current and then the other ones had different offsets uh, and I've, what I found is that that's the um, tolerance of resistors around the op amp uh, so with different uh, resistor values or well with the same resistor values but because of the tolerance differences on the resistors it can create a little offset on the current at the bottom because it's amplifying it by quite a bit um, so I've just fixed that in software so that I can it just I can set the offset value and that, that zeroes the meter then for that. So uh, along with this circuit I've got this, this circuit as well. So when I've put this uh, project in a box like I've got here, so this is this is a, one of the power meters, I'll just move that away for a second. So this is one of the power meters I've put it in a box and I've got the, the connectors on the side um, for the power load and the shunt resistor. I've got the shunt resistor separate as well um, so that for later projects I can put like big shunts like this on it uh, so this is like for 100 amps so when I start doing e-bike stuff and and uh, things like that and also for um, my, my uh, pulse welder I wanted to see what how much current that's taking so I'll be using a shunt like that um, hopefully later on with this uh, so this is the one uh, the circuit which I'm using in this video for charging so I've got a little charger for the 18650 there and I can put 18650 over through the load. I can measure the power. Um, but so, but the power meter, just to demonstrate, was um, it's two boards. It's this board, then that board out the side where it's got the connectors on it. And it also has a fuse on it. So when I put it in the um, in the case, I put this at the front of the case, and then this board at the side of the case. But I've added this board as well. Um, and this is just so this uh, was meant for power supply, like I had in the simple power supply circuit I showed in an earlier video uh, and it's got a switch on the front so you can switch the power on and off uh, and so there's an output of this board which is here which is the on off value and I've got it going for a transistor here so I can switch the load on and off on on this cell so actually if I turn actually if I turn that on so you see it starts drawing current and it shows the voltage drop as well so when you put load on it the voltage on the cell drops and it shows current through that. Uh, so, but what I decided actually when I made that this little board on this strip board here, is that actually these components could go on this board and go in the case uh, along with all the other components. And uh, so that's the thing that I've had with this project is that I've been making these PCBs at home, and I've always had the plan to get some of these PCBs manufactured, uh, like a PCB manufacturer, to get proper PCBs. Um, but I've always been like having these additional things oh I thought it'd be good if it could do this or it could be good if it could do that and I've been slowly modifying it and making more of these boards at home but I'm once I've got these components on there and tried them out hopefully I'll send away for to get some PCBs made proper ones and I'll build up a bunch of these uh, so I can try it in uh, so I can do different things throughout my, my uh, videos I've got lots of plans for measuring power and stuff but for this video, uh, I just want to uh, demonstrate uh, measuring the capacity of a 18650 and measuring how much it is to uh, discharge and, and recharge. Uh, so I'll go, go through the features of, of this power pick power supply, uh, pick power meter. Um, I've basically used all the memory in the pick uh, pick my controller, 
um, to do all the features I need. So on this first screen it shows the volts and the amps. It shows if it's switched on or if it's switched off. Uh, if I hold down the button it goes to the next screen and when it's on, actually let me go, I just cycle through the screens, go back to the first screen, switch on and if I go to the next screen then you'll see so how much uh, power it's consuming instantaneously and what the effective circuit resist load resistance is um, instantaneously and that's, uh, that's a 10 ohm resistor on, that I've got on there as a load uh, and I think that's about 3 watt resistor so it's well within the how much power I can put through that resistor and then when I go to the next screen this is the um, accumulated amp power and watt hour consumption um, now there is an issue with this at the minute. I need to calibrate this particular these this readings. So I can calibrate the volts and amps. So that's easy because you just put a load on it and you can then set the volts and amps that it's actually uh, consuming or or that's across the circuit. Um, but as far as the watt hours and amp hours is, it's a time a time constituent in there as well. Uh, so in order to measure that, I need to the microcontroller needs to have a good concept of what time is. Now I don't have a crystal drive this microcontroller it's all internally it's like just the internal lc uh so uh, rc um i think it is um oscillator uh, and that can vary from chip to chip uh, so i need to actually when i make these put these together i need to calibrate the, the time so from um from meter to meter at the minute there can be like a a, a slight difference in what it measures uh but i need to that that's not a problem that's an, I, I don't need to change the pcb for that that Gets fixed in software so I can get these PCBs manufactured hopefully but so anyway this measures the current and watts uh, amp hours and watt hours that are being consumed and I've got a configuration screen uh, and in this configuration screen I can set how the power restores so if I power this off uh, and then power it back on it comes back on as a not in the off state but I can also have it resume in whatever state it was when the power was lost from this. So it could resume on if it was on before, or resume off if it was off before. Or I've got on, so it, whenever the power is restored to this, it always turns the power on. Uh, but by default, off for now. Uh, I've got a rotate display option, depending on how I case it. So you might want the display to be uh, one way or the other. Then this, I can set the decimal places for volts and amps, but I need to calibrate. If I change the decimal places, I need to calibrate for those decimal places but that's so I can do hundreds of amps hopefully later on with this uh, then this is where this will get used um, in this particular video so the min voltage so this is like the cutoff voltage so this meter can actually trip the power and turn the power off under certain circumstances so in this circumstances if when the voltage drops below three volts so it'll discharge one of these cells down to three volts and then it will trip the voltage off automatically so that I can then uh, go look on the power display, see how many watt hours and amp hours uh, were consumed and, uh, and from the full charge down to the three volt charge. Uh, so that's a feature for, for that. Uh, and then on the next configuration display, I can set another thing, I can set max amp. So this is almost like a, it's like a, a virtual fuse type thing, but this doesn't read the, the current and the volts quick enough to be like a fuse. It's just, but it's just like a safety measure. That you, so you can set the maximum current and the maximum watts that the power supply, uh, what, what its load is consuming, and if it goes above that, so for instance, I've got a three watt shunt, uh, sorry, what a three watt load resistor here, ten ohm load resistor, which is three watts. So I've put three watts in there. So if I put a load on which draws more than three watts to protect this resistor, it will trip if it goes above uh, three watts. And if I go back here, you see the, the volts uh, that it's tripped because it goes, it had gone b uh, below uh, three volts, uh, apparently. Uh, so this must be quite near the bottom of the, oh yeah, 3.4 volts. So fully charged, this would be 4.2 volts. So, and it will always, because it, when it's under, when it's on and it's under load, it will drop the voltage slightly. So if I put this on again, see it's down to 3.1, 3.2. When that uh, goes below uh, three volts again, uh, it will uh, it will trip and uh, then turn the power off, and you had the little V there, which means that it was tripped because of uh, volts, because uh, it went below certain volts, uh, or it could be an A if it, which means it's tripped when it went above a certain current, or it could be a W, which means it tripped when it's above certain uh, power consumption, or it could be a P, which means that the power was lost. So in other words, 
uh, whilst the power is on, if I take the power off and then resume, then plug the power back in, I just need to look above the meter. It should say a P there, which means the power was interrupted and that's what tripped it under, under that particular circumstance. So that's the features of this power meter and it should be, uh, I should be able to use that in lots of things like power supplies or measuring uh, current for electric bicycles or, you know, solar cells. So, so I want to put some solar cells in, solar panels in, sorry. So I want to be able to measure how much power they're supplying as well over time and see what kind of voltage and trip under certain circumstances and things. Uh, but that's an overview of the circuit. So at the end of the, the test, the, on charging, uh, the watt hours uh, was 1.54 watt hours and on discharging it was 1.73 watt hours. So that's uh, 200 uh, milliwatt hours difference. Uh, and that's going to be between the accuracy of the volts, the amps, and at the minute the time is going to be probably f fairly different as well. So when you're charging, the amp hour rate is going to display naturally lower because the volts are higher, so it takes less, fewer amps. Uh, in order to produce the power uh, whereas when you're discharging it pulls the voltage down and so in order to demonstrate the same kind of power uh, the current is going to be uh, uh, relatively higher than the than when you're charging the current so just uh, ultimately uh, just show how i reduced the noise from the oled um, display all i had to do was put in a zener diode here i found that 2.7 volt um, zener diode in the power line uh, leading up to the OLED display and having a capacitor on the other side of that um, Zener diode that actually even though there's still noise if you look on the actual voltage on the um, board there's still noise on the on the on the on the um, 3.3 volt I think it is that I've got on the board but actually this this Zener diode has actually made it stable enough that the actual display is is fairly steady is nice and steady